Hi, everybody. Um, thanks for taking your time to join us today. And uh, we're excited to um, tell you more about our uh, Field Seeker Windows ULV Adult Deciding Extension. And I'm Linda Glover, the GIS Sales and Service Manager here at Frontier. I'm the team lead for our GIS Services, Software Development, and Water Resources Department. My main focus, though, is to help all of you to learn more about our mosquito control systems. And um, I'm your sales contact, so I'm happy to help you in any way you need. And I enjoy uh, working with the technology and um, sharing any information I can with you all. Uh, my colleague and co-presenter today is Chad Mentier. And I've had the pleasure of working with Chad for the last 17 years. Uh, Chad's a software solutions manager, and he's earned his uh, GIS professional certificate. Uh, Chad also enjoys working with you all, and from what many of you tell me, he does an excellent job addressing your technical needs, so thank you for that feedback. And he also does a great job listening to what you all are saying and can communicate that back to our um, development staff. And I'm sure you'll see some of your input in today's demonstration. So we won't be stopping for questions today, but please list your questions in the question set, uh, section on the GoToWebinar menu there. And what happens is the questions go into a spreadsheet. And then right after the webinar, we'll answer the questions in that same spreadsheet and then email them to you after the webinar. So without further ado, we'll get started with the product information. Our uh, Windows ULV extension software was released in May of 2017. So uh, it's been used uh, through two field seasons with a lot of great feedback from our end users. And the uh, tracking adult assigned spray activities has always been a collection of challenges. You've told us that you needed a system to address accountability and feasibility issues. And um, our state and federal agencies want accurate reports of chemical usage, and the public wants reassurance that adult sprains be done responsibly. responsibly. <clears throat> and you need ways to quickly report or summarize that information. You also said you need to be able to quickly defend your activities or communicate your activities with the public. You want a way to easily pull up spray session information and know whether the fogger was on or off. And maybe too, what the flow rate was and how fast the truck was traveling at that specific time. You've also wanted to know how you can proactively provide spray schedules through your website or a public notification app. You've also told us you wanted to get information to the truck, drive, truck driver faster and uh, that you were tired of managing paper map books and trying to keep them up to date. You also want new spray areas in the system the same day. We've also heard it is very important that the mobile field tracking system is easy to use, enables the driver to see where they've sprayed and where they've missed. Well, our Windows ULV adult deciding software directly meets these challenges. It's based on state-of-the-art open GIS technology, but it's also built on our tried and true tested data collection engine that's been used for over 10 years by over 600 Sentinel and Field Seeker adult deciding users. We've also tried to make it affordable as possible. So the approximate cost for the system for one office user in one truck is $5,080. And this includes the rugged tablet and the vehicle mounting accessories. And then you can also add the system to additional trucks for about $3,580. So we hope you um, see that we've you know, tried hard to take your input and incorporate it into the product, and then um, also make it as affordable as possible. 
The Windows ULV software it comes in two parts. It consists of, a, uh, of the Office software that's installed on a local computer and a Windows 10 mobile app. You use the Office software to configure the system with your employee information, truck identification, sprayer types, and chemical information. And you can also define your no spray or restricted areas and then select the distance from them that the driver starts getting a warning. You can also use the Office software to import shape files that have restricted areas or predefined line spray routes. Or you can also export data in KML or shapefile format to use another map or GIS system. The reporting option gives you the ability to print or export different spray session reports with or without a map. The Windows 10 tablet sits in the truck cab alongside the sprayer controller, and then the mobile app records spray session information and allows the truck driver to see where they are at on the map. They can also see nearby restricted areas and whether this sprayer is on or off. And there's a dashboard down at the bottom of the display that shows GPS and sprayer status information. And Chad will show you more in depth here in a, in a minute so you can see it better. Um, during the demo. Uh, the Windows ULV extension is the upgrade for our current Sentinel Build Seeker or Data Master 2 customers. It is a standalone system, so it doesn't require ESRI licensing uh, because it is built on OpenGIS technology. However, it is totally compatible with Field Seeker and Sentinel. Um, as I mentioned, it's built for Windows 10 devices with serial ports. Um, currently, um, all of the sprayers out there that have data output capability uh, requires communication through a serial port. So that's why we're limited to those Windows 10 devices with serial ports. So right now we can uh, collect spray session information automatically uh, through Clark SmartFlow or London Fog, Curtis Dyna Fog, and Target BNG Phoenix Foggers that have data output. And then um, if you have sprayers or backpack sprayers that don't have data output, um, the software does have a capability to um, draw a point, line, or area on the map in a formal pop-up, and then you can collect the spray session information at that time. And I think at this time, um, Chad was going to provide a poll. Yeah, so we're just curious to see what kinds of sprayers with data output that you currently are using. And this is multiple selections, so if you use a mix of different kinds, um, go ahead and put that in there. Okay, so far it looks like about 60% of people have voted. And as Linda mentioned, we will show how the software will let you record uh, spray activities with sprayers that don't have data output also. Uh, but a lot of times sprayers can be outfitted with a control box from one of the manufacturers, Clark SmartFlow and others that will output data. So it looks like about 90% have voted. Um, looks like about two thirds um, Clark SmartFlow, about 25% London Fog, about 11% Curtis DynaFog, and then we've got 7% Adapco and 16% other. So thank you for uh, responding on the, uh, on the poll. Okay, um, yeah, and just I just want to make a comment there too. Um, we currently are not compatible with Adapco sprayers. Um, you know, they have a closed system, so to speak, where they use their own software and haven't made their uh, uh, controller output available to us. So our software is not compatible with um, Adapco at this time. Um, we did also recently release a new line based route feature 
and uh, Chad will get that more in detail on that, but basically you can preload uh, those spray routes and it'll show the driver uh, where they can start and stop and which way to drive the route. And we also um, added new data synchronization options lately. Uh, we've always been able to, um, you know, synchronize data through the cable or external USB drive or Wi-Fi. But recently, uh, we also have the, the other thing too that you need to watch out for when you, you know, if you're looking at other types of tablets, uh, we've, you know, found some of them don't have very accurate um, GNSS or GPS in the truck cab and the Mesa 2 has been designed for that situation, so it does have reliable GPS. It is IP68 rated, which means that you can um, drop it at shockproof, waterproof, and very rugged. It does have a seven inch active viewing area. Typically when it's mounted in the truck, you're running on vehicle power, but if you do use your um, unit during the day for larva sighting or surveillance activities, um, you can get eight to 10 hours on one charge on the battery. And it does come with a two year warranty. So if it does you know, have some kind of failure that's not your fault, um, Juniper will repair it at no charge or um, even replace it. So just a little bit about our roadmap. You might have seen this information before, but just to kind of let you know where, where we've been and where we're going. Uh, we first released our Sentinel uh, software back in 2007. And uh, prior to that, we customized systems for a few mosquito control districts um, that gave us the experience to produce Sentinel as an out-of-the-box product. And um, Sentinel is based on the Esri platform, you know, that was uh, the state of the art back in the early 2000s, which was um, desktop basic and ArcPad. And so Sentinel has an office and field workflow for larva sighting, adult sighting, surveillance, and service request. And it's compatible with Windows Mobile and Windows devices. And as you may have heard, Esri set the end of life for ArcPad in December 2020. And so therefore, we've had to be proactively developing a migration path for our Sentinel users. So. Um, so ArcPad uh, will retire in December 2020. <clears throat> Field Seeker, uh, we released it in 2012 and we developed it under contract uh, with the Florida Keys. Um, it's based on the Esri ArcGIS server and uh, we developed a native iOS app using the Esri 10.2 runtime. And um, since it's a server product, um, it is better suited for multi-user situations, and then we could use um, iPhone, iPads uh, for the field work. And um, if you were uh, attended our recent webinar there at the end of October, you know that we're getting ready to release our new version of Field Seeker, uh, which is a core app that has the larva sighting with storm drain treatment, surveillance, and service request workflows um, in uh, a new platform. Um, or based on the new Esri ArcGIS Online platform. And then we use the Xamarin cross-platform cross runtime 100 app for the um, mobile app. So we're getting close to release. The scheduled date is November 19th, but that will release here yet this year and will be available for next uh, field season. And so uh, the adult sighting portion is covered with the Windows ULV app that we're gonna be demoing today. So even though we're getting this new um, larvicide surveillance and service request workflow, the Windows ULV software is available now. And if you're planning to do any implementations, we can start um, that part of the migration right away. We also have a new public notification app that released in October. And uh, we also did this as development project with the Florida Keys Mosquito Control District. And um, I'll get more into it later in the, at the end, towards the end of the presentation, but it's a way for you to um, share information with the public. So at this time, I'll go ahead and turn the uh, presenter over to Chad so he can do the deep dive on the software. 
Okay, thank you, Linda. Mm -hmm. And just make sure it's showing the correct screen here. Are you seeing the ULV office and ULV mobile? Yes, yep. Okay. Okay. So we're excited to show more details about the software. Um, a few of you um, over the months have, have taken the time to um, get together with us individually and see more details on the software. Uh, as Linda mentioned, there's a mobile uh, software component for the field collection and then an office software component. So I've got both of those up. Um, I'm gonna start with the mobile side, what the driver will see uh, when they're running the software in, in the field on the Mesa 2 tablet. And um, when they first start the app, it just comes to a login screen where they select who they are and the vehicle they're using. It will remember what was selected last. So um, if you've used it before, it just defaults to what you picked before. The opening screen shows a few things like the current version of the software and when it was last synced or updated, um, as well as when the base map was last updated. The sync button will allow you to update any information that might have changed on the office side of things. So if there were new uh, restricted areas that were added, or if there, <clears throat> excuse me, were changes to technicians or sprayers, trucks, products that were made, um, then a sync would um, pull those changes down, uh, as well as send any field data that had been collected in the meantime uh, back to the back to the office. The sync says that it's going to use Google Drive. If, um, if I press sync, then it will check for an internet connection and sync using Google Drive. As Linda mentioned, the options for syncing data are either Drive or Dropbox, or uh, wireless sync to a network location, or uh, sync using the USB. So I'm gonna go ahead and just log in. This will take me to um, a map. Um, I'm going to kind of go to my location here in uh, in the Jerome area. And right now I'm just using um, an online base map because I'm in the office and have an internet connection. Um, normally that wouldn't be the case in the field. Some people do have a wireless hotspot or a device that has um, cellular capability, but normally our truck spray data collection is fully offline. So the the software does support offline base maps and when we set up the software for customers, we create that offline base map for your area. Um, and uh, anytime that an update is needed, we can recreate that offline base map and basically just goes onto the software. But for now, I'm using an online base map and I have the choice of uh, just the road view or the aerial view or a hybrid view. And that's just using uh, Bing maps because this is just built in a Microsoft environment. The app itself is very simple, basically just shows the driver uh, location where they are, uh, zoomed into roughly a neighborhood view. Um, the map will show orange no sprays or restricted areas nearby. Um, it shows the spray activity in progress as red and green dots for sprayer off and sprayer on. Uh, it also will show in um, the, the dials down at the bottom, the indicators at the bottom, um, whether there's a good GPS location, the speed and direction, and then if the spray session is in, in progress, it'll show uh, the sprayer status and the flow rate. Um, a few things on the map itself, um, just we can grab the, grab the map and move it around, but there are zoom in, zoom out tools and um, it automatically follows GPS. That can be turned off if we want to move the map and look, to, look at something else. There's also a auto rotate. So as the driver drives around, then the map will automatically rotate based on the direction of travel. So pretty basic uh, interface there. When the driver is going to uh, create a spray session, that's a very simple process as well. So go to create spray session and it defaults to the current date and time. The sprayer uh, can be selected, the product selected, vehicle. The spray area would be spray zone or spray area. Um, if that's configured, it'll default to the one that I'm currently in. Um, I can pick a different one if I'm actually driving to another locality. 
Spray route is a newer feature. This is a line-based spray route, and we'll talk about that a little bit more uh, later. We can also put in weather information, such as wind speed, get the uh, audible and the visible warning. <laughs> so this warning message that they'll see near these restricted areas, um, if, if no specific information has been put in for the area, it'll just say restricted area is nearby. Uh, but each of those restricted areas can have a specific message as well. So in this case, do not spray during the week. It could also pop up with a gate code or with a person to contact first. Um, that, that warning message is customizable for each spray area. So this shows that the sprayer is on and the flow rate. And then if we're using a, um, a variable rate, as we move around, and drive slower or faster, the flow rate will adjust. If we turn the sprayer off, it'll show that the sprayer is off and so on. So very easy for the driver to tell if everything is working as it's supposed to. And then when they're done with the spray session, they just hit stop. I'm of course not moving, so we're not seeing actual spray data in progress as we go. Um, I'll just zoom out a little bit so you can see this spray session that was done. We have sprayer off, sprayer on, and then back. Let me go ahead and stop the spray session. And I want to turn on something in the map. One thing we can also show as we go uh, is the, the spray area as the, a buffered 300 foot um, area. So as we're driving through a neighborhood, and this turning the sprayer on to spray, we'll be able to see what kind of coverage we're getting for that spray area as well. So a few other things that we can um, do if we're, uh, if I'm starting a spray session as the driver, and for some reason um, I'm not getting a connection to GPS or to the sprayer, we did include some simple troubleshooting um, tools in, in the options. Um, so if I go into the options for GPS, I have this set to use the location sensor, which on, on a Windows 10 device, will just use the Microsoft location sensor. Um, I can test whether that's getting data from the location sensor. And so it tells me it's receiving data successfully. Depending on the device that I'm using, most people use the Mesa 2, but some people use other tablets that they already had or that they, that they, that they purchased. Um, the connection may be a different COM port um, rather than the location sensor. So it's possible to uh, choose different COM ports and do a test and attempt to see if you're getting data from that COM port. Now, maybe most of the time drivers are not going to be tasked to try to do any troubleshooting, but um, when, when um, a lack of connection can stop a, a spray event from happening. It can be um, part of the training to show people how to uh, just s switch the different options, save it, and test it. And then if you get data coming through, that that means you're good to go. So a minimal amount of troubleshooting can be done uh, using the options screens. I'm going to do the same for our option sprayer. This is set to connect on COM1 because um, I'm on my desktop computer. Um, normally the, the Mesa 2 would be like COM4 or COM5 or COM6. And it, it just depends on um, how Windows assigns that COM port. So the same thing, we can just pick from the available COM ports, test it, and as long as we're getting data coming through, then we know we have communication. So. That might be a little bit more than most people want to deal with, but it is something that when it doesn't work, there's a way to make it work and to keep working, and that's important. Um, a couple of additional things that are here um, in the options. Uh, on the map, we can turn different layers on and off. So right now, I've got most of the layers turned on. Um, I don't have track log or event log turned on. I'll talk about event log a little bit more in a minute. But the track log is just um, a GPS, um, just a GPS trail of where I've driven. I can turn the track log on and have it record that even when I'm not in the spray session. So if I want to know where the driver's 
uh, went between the shop and the and the spray event, then it's possible to record a track log. That's turned off by default. Uh, on the options um, for syncing, um, I do have the the system set up to sync via uh, uh, Drive, uh, Google Drive. But um, if I don't have an internet connection, then I can still sync to um, uh, to a local uh, like a local drive letter. So on the Mesa 2 in the field, this could be just the flash drive, the USB flash drive. So all these different options are there just to make it uh, uh, easy for managers to get data to and from the device and uh, easy for the drivers to be able to make sure communication is happening. Lastly, on the options menu, we have the option to automatically check for updates. So as we come out with new versions, with new features and bug fixes and so on, then it's uh, all of the devices and software can just be automatically updated. I'm going to come back to the create menu and talk about two other kinds of things that we can record in the field. The primary thing, of course, is spray sessions and spray events. Um, but it's also possible to record just a, um, an, a another kind of event. So if the driver comes across a, um, you know, a, a bee, a beehive, or uh, a, an irate resident that doesn't want to be sprayed, or some other thing, it's possible to locate that event on the map and basically just put in what kind of an event it was. and put in some comments and then that gets saved and that'll be available to review in the office so the, the supervisor will be able to look at that. It's sometimes hard to remember exactly where some oddity occurred and that's a way to record it either using GPS or just by, uh, by recording it on the map. So now if I turn that event log layer on, that's just uh, kind of miscellaneous points on the map. And then lastly, if you have sprayers like backpack sprayers, or truck mounted sprayers, um, ATV mounted sprayers that do not have a control box that outputs data, it is possible to sketch in a treatment line or a treatment area and put in the relevant details to record that as a spray event. That will then be included with the rest of the data on reports and so on. So if I sketch in a polygon and I treated this area, I just kind of draw it in. And when I save that sketch, then I can fill in the details for start and stop time, what kind of sprayer I was using. This sprayer list can be expanded to include things like Miriamas and other things, um, which product I was using, vehicle. And then I'd start putting in like the, the total amount of fog time that I had and the flow rate and it'll start calculating some things um, for me here. So I have places to put in the relevant spray session information and uh, weather information, and then I can save that. And um, now I've got a spray event for that area that I drew in. The same is true for sketching in a line, like a, a roadside ditch, for example. Um, and again, these are kind of fill-ins that came from feedback on previous Sentinel and Field Seeker customers just wanting a way to record things that uh, uh, that didn't come from a sprayer with data output. So when I'm finished with the, um, the, the spraying on the mobile, then I'll go ahead and log out. It will ask if I want to sync data before closing. So if I click yes, then it will try to sync using Google Drive. If I click no, then the data is still retained on the mobile device. And the next time that I uh, start up the mobile software, I can sync, uh, sync then. So I'm going to switch over to the Office uh, software. Um, on the Office software, we'll be looking at tools to manage the configuration of the system, um, tools to find and review data, uh, tools to create restricted areas, um, and then tools to run reports and import or export data. Actually, I have one more thing to show on the mobile. I'm sorry. I'm going to log back in and show um, the information about the um, 
line-based spray routes. So, okay. Get this kind of back to a smaller screen. The feature that we added for the line-based spray routes, um, I'll select one of the routes and preview it so we can look at what this looks like. It basically shows um, the driver where to start and which direction to drive and where to have the sprayer on and off. And this is um, this is handy functionality for some customers where there are complex areas to drive and they want to be able to not have the drivers doubling doubling back um, and then maximize you know maximize the product usage. Um, with the line based spray routes, it basically is just a visual cue to the driver, and then as they drive and collect the spray event, they're going to see the green dots for where they sprayed and the red dots for where they didn't um, to see that they're following the route. So basically start, direction, on off, and then stop. And that um, spray route can be created um, externally to the system and then imported into the, the, uh, the ULV office software. Not everybody uses routes. A lot of people will just um, use zones or spray areas. And in that case, you don't need to have a route for that. If we go back to create spray session, um, we can always select a spray area or, or zone that we're doing the spraying in. And then if we optionally want to use routes, then that's available for us to, to use. So I almost missed that. So I'm done now. I'll close out of the mobile. So we'll come back into the Office software. And in the Office software, the first thing that we want to look at is just accessing spray uh, information. So if we turn on some spray sessions and then we just kind of right click on treatment areas or treatment log, it'll zoom us to the extent of that. Um, I can change the, the background map so I can make this a little bit more visible. We have our red and green uh, spray dots and then the spray area. Um, if we get a call from somebody about a spray event and they say that they were missed or they say that uh, we spray them when we shouldn't have, um, we can just type in a an address and that will zoom us to that place on the map um, and then we can just see with the spray session that was nearby what was done and, and when by whom so each of those uh, spray points has all the detailed information of the driver truck sprayer speed and flow rate um, and chemical used. So it's it's easy to track down uh, what actually occurred at a given spot at a given time. One thing we can do too with this, uh, this um, spray event once we've found it is we can go to reports and we can print a report with a map. And so this spray session detail report, we can use a map from the main window and use the sessions already selected there generate that report and then we have something that we can um, print or save as a pdf and send out to somebody uh, to show what we did so there's the map of the event there's the details of everything about the event this detail report will show um, all, the, all the basic information start and stop time etc but it also shows the driving distance spray distance average driving speed maximum driving speed as you can see, I was driving way too fast, so I probably will have a, a meeting with my supervisor <laughs> and then the totals uh, for, the, for the products that were used. These reports can then be exported out or printed in various uh, formats. So all of the reports can be sent out as PDFs, uh, Word docs, Excel, spreadsheets, etc. Just looking at a couple of the other reports, um, we also have just the summary report, and we could do a summary for, you know, an entire year, uh, for example. So if I go back to the beginning of, well, I'll just go for um, January 2017 to, and, to, until now, 
and generate that report. It makes it very easy to summarize all the spray activities that were done, showing the chemical number of applications, total use, and total treated acres. So very easy summary information. And then the spray session detail report, I showed one example. We can do it with or without MAP. Um, the other uh, detail report, non, not the one that's columnar, but the, the other detail report, is the same report as what we had in Sentinel. So some of the feedback from some of our Sentinel customers was that this format can be sometimes difficult to read or difficult to interpret. There's a lot of um, pieces of information there on the report. So we did preserve the report because a lot of people are used to it, but we also have the new format that puts it just in a little bit more legible or readable form. So those are reports. Um, one of the other things that you might want to do when finding spray information is export that out to show in another system or to import into another place. So I have selected uh, one of the spray sessions here. I can go to export and I have the option to export to either KML or shapefile. And if I had multiple um, spray events selected, I could output each of those to a separate file or not, choose where to output them, and then choose what kind of data to export. So I can do all of the things or just treatment areas or treatment lines um, sometimes with lots of spray data, it might not make sense to include the spray points with uh, thousands of individual second by second points. I can just do the areas or lines. So I can export that. And then that, that KML file or shape file can be used in other systems. I'll talk a little bit more about an upcoming roadmap item for other ways to integrate with other systems here in just a few minutes. I'm gonna go into the configuration briefly. Um, one of the important things with the system is to be able to keep up with changes in your operation. So you can go in and make changes to, if you hire some new people, we can add technicians. If you use a different product, we can add new products and um, anything um, that needs to be updated such as um, restricted area types, we can um, add new choices to any of the pick lists. Um, any of those kinds of changes can be made at any time by the supervisor or by whoever has access to the office application. And when that's done, then they basically just extract data from the office app, and then it's ready for use by the, um, the mobile software. So I'm gonna go into some of the data operations this is the extract data option that packages up all of the um, map information, uh, restricted areas, zones, and then all of the configurations. And it puts them into a geo package file that the mobile device uh, looks for when it does the sync. So I have this set up with Google Drive. So this will package everything up and then it will upload the file to Google Drive. And then when I sync from the tablets, it'll automatically pull that in. This extract would happen anytime I make a change. So if I added a technician or if I added a no spray, then I would just do a new extract. And then mobile devices, when they sync the next time, they pick that change up. When this completes, there's a, a couple of other things in the data operations that are also supported. Okay, so it's uploading to Drive. We see that and it'll complete here momentarily. Um, one thing on this screen is that we can support um, legacy field seeker for Windows Mobile um, in the field. There's a few customers that still use that and that data can be collected still in the field and then it can be processed here into this new office software so that you can easily get your reports and, and so on. In addition, we do have the ability to import zones or map areas, import restricted areas, and import spray routes. So if you've already got those in, from another system or you've already got those from Sentinel or you've already have, you have shape files, those can be imported. They don't have to be created from scratch. Lastly, I wanna show uh, how to create a new restricted area or a, a new no spray. 
Uh, again, if we get a, a call from somebody and they give us their address, uh, we can find that address, zoom to it on the map, and if that's where the no spray is at, then we can just come to restricted areas, add a new one, draw that in, and then put in the minimum amount of information about that no spray, what type it is, um, person's name, and, and we can put in also here the specific warning. So what, if we put anything in here, that's what will pop up on that uh, um, visual warning on the on the mobile software. So there's our new no spray, and then we would simply come back to data operations and extract data again to include that for the mobile devices. So it's pretty fast and easy to add restricted areas. Okay, I'm going to take just a couple more minutes before switching it back to Linda. Um, we, we wanted to discuss a, um, a roadmap item. We talked about export, how it can go to KML or Shapefile. But one of the things that our customers have asked uh, the, us for the ability to do is to be able to sync some of this data to, um, to an ArcGIS feature service. And so what would that en enable or allow you to be able to do? Right now, if we do export and export a shapefile or KML, then we've got to take some additional steps to bring it into the ArcGIS environment. It's kind of an export-import process. So our roadmap includes being able to sync directly to a feature service. And what that would allow us to be able to do would be able to uh, view the information for those spray areas or spray lines in an ArcGIS online web map or web app. So here we've got just an example web app with Web App Builder where we have um, kind of a dashboard set up that shows a couple of things. It shows the spray events on the map. We can click on them and see what they are. Uh, we've got an info summary widget where we can drill down and click on different uh, spray events and see when they happened. Uh, we've got a couple of charts that we could run and we can see um, you know, spray spray distance by tech, or um, I think the other one was products by tech. So you can set up things like this with just um, m more efficient ways to share that data with more people. Um, you know, it's one thing to have the office software and have a supervisor be able to look at it, but if you want to be able to share that information more widely, in your organization or with the public, then that can be done through ArcGIS online and through web maps and web apps. The other reason for the feature service sync is so that we can use it in um, Field Seeker. So this is the new Field Seeker Office software. If we come to the map, uh, those uh, features, when they're synced with the feature service, will be viewable with the rest of the map data um, in, in Field Seeker. So that'll come up here in just a minute. But that's the, the reason for the feature service sync, and that is part of our roadmap um, that we're going to have available before the next field season. So again, here's the web map in Field Seeker with the rest of our Field Seeker data, and then that um, treatment area information is available there too. So with that, I'll turn it back to uh, Linda. And again, please, if you have questions about any of these functions, send them in through the questions section, and we will respond to those either during the rest of this webinar or afterwards and email them out. Thank you. Thanks, Chad. Did you want to do a poll or? Oh, yeah, let's see. I did have a couple of polls. I even had a note to myself to ask them. <laughs> Let's see, I did want to ask uh, if you already use ArcGIS Online also. So our uh, ULV software doesn't require any ESRI stuff, but oftentimes people do already have it or already use it also for other things. So thank you for responding. Looks like about 75% of people do have 
And again, I just want to be clear, that's not necessary for the system. It's just a, a way to share information and include it with other data. And so um, we think the ability to sync data to that platform is going to add a lot. Okay, looks like about 80% have voted, about 80% yes. Let's see, so I'm gonna go ahead and close that poll. And I think that's I think that's all. Okay, do you want to pass the screen back to me? Yeah, make you the presenter. Okay. There we go. Thank you. Can you see my screen all right now? Yep, looks good. Okay. Thanks everybody and thanks Chad for going through the comprehensive demo on the software and, and if anybody would like a private demo just let us know and we'd be happy to go through and learn more about your specific needs and answer questions while we go through it. I just have a few more slides to wrap up here before we're done. Uh, we also wanted to mention that we do sell the New Mountain ultrasonic weather station. Uh, some of our Sentinel customers already use this system. It is uh, truck mounted and um, outputs wind speed, direction, temperature, barometric pressure, and relative humidity. Our Windows ULV software will be compatible with these sensors um, by next spring before the field season. So we uh, that's part of our roadmap. And um, also, I just wanted to, um, I guess, have a chance to, to compliment the rest of our um, technical staff here you know, and give you some reasons on why to choose Frontier as your technology partner. Uh, we are experienced managed services provider supporting over 225 mosquito and public health agencies. And I know we're adding several more on here for this year. Um, we have been in business for 30 years, and some of us over 30 years, and have been specializing in getting data to the field and back. <clears throat> so we know how to um, do this and I guess how to streamline it and what problems we might run into and help um, you know people avoid those problems and be as efficient as possible. Uh, we do have a formalized help desk um, system set up here so I'm sure you've talked to Tyler and Chris. Um, they work alongside um, Chad to provide our um, technical support and uh, when you make a purchase and pay your annual maintenance, you are entitled to unlimited technical support via telephone, email, chat, and web support. Uh, so, you know, p please feel free to uh, contact us anytime you do need help. You know, our goal is to handle the technical aspects, you know, giving you more time to focus on mos mosquito control applications or activities. We do have a dedicated roadmap uh, for continued software development, and uh, we, we will grow the support resources as our customer base grows. And so please, you know, give us feedback, uh, whether that's on the product or, um, you know, if we're missing the mark on something that you're expecting, I, I want to hear about that too so we can uh, fix things. We can't fix problems unless we know about it. Uh, Frontier is an employee-owned company. And so the company as a whole uh, is poised for continuing growth and have a lot of exciting things uh, planned in the future. And we're not successful without our partners. Um, Clark is our exclusive sales representative for um, our Mosquito software products. And I wanted to mention too where when I said about how not being compatible with ADAPCO systems, some of our customers have contacted Clark and um, retrofitted their system with SmartFlow, and then that way we can use um, our system uh, with the ADAPCO equipment. So if you're interested in that, please contact your local uh, Clark representative. Uh, we've been a long-term Esri Gold partner um, since our products are based on the Esri platform. So that means that we're technically aligned with Esri's development and we can keep our software roadmap to where we, you know, we're, we can keep the updates coming and take advantage of all the new things that they release. 
um, and Juniper Systems has also been a partner since the 80s as well as Trimble. So we're, we're well versed with uh, rugged field computers and GPS technology. Uh, for more information on our mosquito products, uh, you know, you're going to get a survey at the end, so you can either request it from there, or if you get down the road and decide you want to look something up, uh, you can go to our website at frontierprecision.com forward slash mosquito forward slash, and that will take you to the mosquito product page. You can request technical support from here or quote, or you can also go over to our support tab across the top and go to the Frontier blog and subscribe to uh, receive blog notifications. We do post updates out there on a pretty regular uh, basis, especially when we've got new things coming out um, to keep everybody informed of um, you know, the new updates and what you get when you do um, download them. Um, if you haven't already, we are continuing our webinar series. Um, our next one's up uh, December 13th on our uh, public notification app. Um, we do have this new application that is compatible with Field Seeker. So it um, is a, a free public phone app that is offered to the public that they can download off the iOS or Android store. And then it has a web app that the agency uses to manage the information that um, you want to push to the public. And then so the public can just subscribe to those news or notifications. Uh, they can enter service requests that come automatically into Field Seeker, or um, you can also uh, push activity map information to them. So whether you, know, you wanna publish your truck spraying um, activities or landing counts or something like that, just any information that you want the public to see. So sign up to attend that and we'll give you some in-depth information. Also, January 8th, we have, uh, we're gonna show some um, working examples on how we can use the Esri platform to extend uh, what we have in our mosquito control workflows. And then we will also be extending our um, webinar schedule to include um, UAS and mosquito control. Uh, we'll be co-sponsoring one with Clark focused on um, truck spraying again um, in January. And then we're also planning um, in February a pre-AMCA uh, webinar just to go over what we're gonna be talking about then. So I think that pretty much wraps it up for today. And um, you'll, as I mentioned before, you'll be getting a um, survey if you want uh, to request a demo for your group or we have some new FAQs or get a price quote, please indicate on that survey and we'll be in touch. Um, if you have questions, still, you can go ahead and still post them in the question section over on the GoToWebinar screen. We're going to be leaving the webinar open for 10 or 20 minutes more, so you have plenty of time to post those questions, and then we'll get those answers uh, back to you later in the day. So thanks again for your time today, and you know it's a pleasure working with a lot of you that are attending today and i know we have some new folks on the phone and we we look forward to the opportunity to work closer with you and but just uh please let us know what we can be doing for you so thank you